Good morning, everyone. Just to give you an idea what we're doing today, we spent the night in Amman. Yesterday, we went up to Jerash and to the uh, River Jabbok and up in this area. Today, we're going from Amman to Madaba. This is up in the mountains. This is going to be where Ma uh, Moses looked out over the land. And for the first time after 450 years, they saw the land of Israel over here that God had promised to Abraham. Once we leave Madaba, we're going to drive down here. And right about this point, well, right about this point, we're going to stop at a mountain, which was Herod's fortress where John the Baptist was beheaded. And then we're going to travel all the way down here to Petra. And we're going to spend the night at Petra and see that magnificent uh, site. And then tomorrow, we're going to drive back up here. We're going to spend a lot of time at the Jordan River where John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus. And then all the way up and across into Israel. Boarding our bus at Amman and heading to Madaba and Mount so Nebo. that I'm wearing is from Saks Fifth Avenue. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Begin with Psalm 24. The Lord is the earth in its fullness, the world and all its people. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it from. Who shall climb the place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things and has not sworn so as to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. history and biblical archaeology there are always people who say if I don't see a material I don't believe okay it's up to you well, we have the books we have the tradition and we have the archaeology that's all enough as a package to prove things and I always say that for Mount Nebo and I say that for the baptism site for the Muslims it simply means that he was divinely appointed in his prophetic role we arrived in Madaba, which has Mount Nebo. It's the place where Moses looked out over the land. And we're going here to have Mass. And this brand new church only opened last October. And they've restructured it over a basilica from the 4th century. Here's a baptismal font in the shape of a cross. And we spent a lot of time learning about these mosaics and what the early church was like before we stopped to have Mass. had mass we're all coming out here now to look out over the Jordan Valley that is the Dead Sea over there Qumran is right up there in a short while we'll be swimming down there in the Dead Sea with everyone those are the mountains Jerusalem if we could see it you'd see Jerusalem right up in there the Jordan Valley uh, River is right through there and this is where Joshua came across here went across the Jordan River and right over in there is Jericho uh, right over there conquered the land and moved in and Moses died up here on Mount Nebo Buried, and no one knows to this day where. And Moses looked 
out over the land. And imagine, the people of Israel have been in Egypt for 400 years. The original generation never even saw this. Generation after generation never saw this land. They were only waiting. God has forgotten us, but God didn't forget them. He had to wait. Why did he wait so long? Two reasons. He had to wait for the children of Israel to get big enough in number that they were able to conquer the land. When they went down into Egypt with Jacob, there was only 72 of them. They could have never taken over the land. And now they were able with numbers to conquer the land. But there's another reason that God waited for 400 years because he said that to Abraham that the, Can the sins of the Canaanite are not yet ripe. They have not come to the point where I have to judge them. But the Canaanites were wicked people. They offered their children as sacrifices. They burned their children in the fire. So those two reasons is why that took 400 years. And when they came out of the land of Egypt, though they were so excited, they came across to here and they looked out and said, God kept his promise to us 400 years later. But they wandered for 40 years because they were grumbling against him all the time and he punished them again. And when they went across, they had to be circumcised because the whole generation had not been circumcised and before they went into the promised land to celebrate the first Passover they had to be circumcised and it says that Joshua gave them flint knives and all those 600,000 fighting men that carry the swords had to circumcise themselves and they called it the hill of the foreskins can you imagine oh, that? The wow. hill of the foreskins, because there were so many. Hi, family. Here we are looking out over the Jordan Valley. We prayed for you all the way through, and we'll keep on doing it. Love you. Moses was here, and we are here, too. My name is Hashim. I'll be your escort for today. Welcome to Jordan, Madam and Nebo, which is where you are right now, the capital city of Mosaics. So what you're watching here is a complete art been existing in this area for 5,000 AD, been practiced by the Byzantine civilization. And then he will dip the stone, the small one, into the glue above the drawing that's already done. So whenever it's done, it will be looking like this. So what you're watching, the back face of the art. Church in downtown Madaba and went to the visitor center and this is a picture of Madaba over a hundred years ago and we got off the bus and we walked through the streets nice to get a flavor of this people and the places and so on and the shops along the way and we arrived at the church and we got our instruction into the ancient mosaic map of the Holy Land that was found in the floor of that church. The Christians of Madaba, my tribe, the largest Christian tribe here. It's about 7,000 people. Okay, and many in the States, in Australia, and other parts of the Middle East, and so on. And everyone was a Greek Orthodox in Jordan. Everyone was a Greek Orthodox. <laughs> This is the actual map of the Holy Land from the 600s, 6th century, and uh, that's Jerusalem, and that's the Jordan River, and this is Egypt over here in the Nile River, but that's the map that we've just been showing and explaining inside the visitor center. But this is the actual map. We left St. George's Church and walked a ways through the middle of town to give a flavor for the village. You can see the Muslim women and the pomegranates, and it's just a nice walk through Madaba, the little shops. And we came to the Food Basket, which is a restaurant owned by our guide. We arrived here for lunch, homemade lunch by his wife. Hi. 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 H
Hello, Feriel. <laughs> this is our guide, Elias's restaurant, and that's his wife, Feriel. How She's are the you? big boss. Good to see you. It's her restaurant. And look at what we're going to be having in their restaurant. Personal. Walking back to the bus after a great lunch, and I'm gonna get a video of everybody so you can see them all here. <laughs> all right, say hi to your family and friends back hey. home. Happy Valentine's Day. That's right, Valentine's. I think I got just about everybody here. Got everybody. Walking through the, through the streets of Madaba, Jordan. About a half an hour, 45 minute drive through the very interesting Jordanian countryside. We come to a place where we can see the mountains of Judea and the Dead Sea on the other side. Bedouin camps among the desert. But here's what we came to see, Macarius. This is Fortress of Macarius where John the Baptist was beheaded. And so we spent some time looking at this and reading the biblical passages about it. I see a Bedouin camp down there with their sheep and their goats, but the reason that we came here is because of this. That is the fortress of Macarius. That is one of Herod's fortresses. You can still see a couple of the pillars up there from his fortress, but it was pretty impregnable, I would think. When you look at the countryside, there is the Dead Sea. You see the Dead Sea, and that's the mountains of Judea over there. And this is where Herod had G, uh, John the Baptist brought and put him in prison. And because of a promise to his illegal, illicit wife's daughter, he had John the Baptist imprisoned here and beheaded in the fortress of Macarius. are a couple of our best buddies along the way very important for us and a couple other little friends crossing the road as we drive by after about an hour we stopped at this nice rest area people could get some ice cream or coffee take a rest and also this is a very refreshing site to find the bathrooms after an hour driving and met some other friends there as well people had a chance to go shopping and then we jumped back in the bus and here's some of the scenery as we drive along drove along this last hour and a half we came uh, after dark we arrived in Petra we'll see more of that tomorrow but I did want you to see a picture of the beauty beautiful Marriott Hotel that we stay at when we're here we can see the mountains from there so stay tuned for tomorrow we're going to be going to Petra and a lot of other adventures and hope you can join us mm -hmm. 